Bottoms up, bottoms up, and you just set up yours. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right, so uh, this is always chaos when Greg's on, and I don't <laughs> expect this to be any different. Watch us now on the Radium website, on your phone, on your laptop, hey, on your tablet. <laughs> okay, here we go. Everyone's <laughs> like, what's the Snapchat? I want to see the suit. BBC R1. Okay, water please, lads. You know how to do this. A considerable oh, amount in your cheeks. <laughs> Is that how it is? <laughs> First, we're going to the Hairy Bikers on BBC Two. I don't know what's happening here in this clip, I've got to be honest, but Chris, you love all these shows, so maybe you'll, um, maybe you'll understand a bit more than me. Find the slit. Look at that. Get it in. Stuff it to the gills. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Myers. <laughs> 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 This suit does not take water well. <laughs> Dave Meyer's there, stuffing an aubergine with garlic, of course. Find the slit. Look at that. Get it in. Stuff it to the gills. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Gills. Thank you, Ryan in Manchester, for sending that one in. And we're off. Good start. <clears throat> Listen carefully to this next one. It's BBC Two Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. And curator Vicky is talking about poet John Keats. I didn't know there was a celebrity antiques road trip. Anyway, John Keats, the poet. And listen about all the perks of where John lived. This was the house where Keats, I think, was happiest during his life. And one of the main reasons for that is it's where he fell in love. Um, so a certain Fanny Braun actually <laughs> lived in the house. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's not even the end of the clip, guys. That was... <clears throat> A relentless wave wow. that headed mm. towards me there. It was a torrent. Mm. OK, let's see if we can get to the end, please. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Oh. So a certain Fanny Braun actually lived in the house next door and they, they met and a romance between them blossomed. Oh, how wonderful. But how convenient to have Fanny next, next door. <laughs> 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 it is, though. That's uh, talking about Keats' fiance Fanny Braun, just next door. Oh, how wonderful. But how convenient to have Fanny next, next door. door. James in Ashbourne sent that to scott.mills at bbc.co.uk. Any more clips, send them in. We can't do this without you. OK, time for a classic now on Greg James, in you under bingo. <laughs> and it's bingo favourite Caroline Martin on BBC WM. Hmm. Mm -mm. <laughs> Caroline is always, always having studio problems. But it's the way she thanks the engineers that I'm impressed with. That's Phil Collins and Philip Bailey, easy lover. It's BBC WM 95.6. Do you know what? We've just had excitement in the studio. My light bulbs went. I've just had three, three men come in to change uh, or to put the power back on. I'm going to blow them every day if I get those three back again. I'll tell you, <laughs> I was cheery. <laughs> Caroline there talking about the light bulbs at BBC WM. <coughs> she was just pleased with them. Uh, seems to be. <laughs> She's polite to say thanks, though, isn't it? I'm going to blow them every day if I get those three back again, I tell you. <laughs> oh. Oh. Right? Yeah, what do you know what? Next time we need wipe, wipe on, wipe off suits. What's happening down there? The, the uh... short suit is not sort of losing the water. It's, it's keeping it all. Yeah, this is a great one today. Make sure you're watching. If you're not already, watch now. It feels like that swimming lesson where you start to wear your pyjamas and get yeah. in. It's a life save. I might have to jack it off soon. Are we jacking it off? Maybe, just okay. because it's getting soaked. OK, we are jacketing off soon. OK, Ali in the UEA library. You remember that place, Greg, uh, Greg rather? Mm -hmm. uh, says it's far too good. <laughs> you never went to UEA, Chris. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't. No. Ben in Exeter says, I'm avoiding my dissertation very successfully by watching Inyo and the Bingo. Next to a show, what's please? Yeah. Next to a show that Chris says he hasn't seen. But Greg, let me ask you this. You know the world's most beautiful egg on BBC <laughs> Four? <laughs> I was watching the Whitmore one yesterday. <laughs> I lost it. 
in my kitchen <laughs> when I was watching that when you said, what was it called? World's Most Beautiful Egg? Yeah, BBC Four. Oh, oh my God. Water, please. Right. You haven't seen it either, no? No, I haven't. Not yet. No. On series link, though. Well, on the show, as well as telling us about some brilliant eggs from the olden days, they spoke a lot about Alexander the Third. And in particular, Alexander's wife, Maria who had a unique way of cheering herself up on Easter morning. It's based on a similar egg in the Danish royal collection, which Maria would have known from her childhood. But little could she have imagined as she fondled her chicken on that Easter Sunday morning that this was the start of something huge. <laughs> oh, I can't bear it. <laughs> Wasn't he sick? <laughs> but little could she have imagined as she fondled her chicken on that Easter Sunday morning yep. that this was the start of something yes. huge. Wow. Suits on Inu de Bingo is such a touch of elegance. It's brilliant, says Mickey. Classy, isn't it? Yes. Mm. Darren and Lewis are watching live in the van on their phone in Derby. Loving it. Chris, look, Chris looks like he's a child dressed up to go to a wedding. <laughs> really? <laughs> What, what? I hope that person's not a parent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Water, please. <laughs> now, I don't want you to forget, Greg James, you might live in a nice flat in London, but I bet you're still jealous of Keats. Oh, how wonderful. But how convenient. I have funny next, next door. door. <laughs> <laughs> you might need to reload the waters a few times for this next one. Mm. Mm-hmm. We're running a tad low. Oh, do you need <clears> more waters? <throat> OK, I can saw that for you, my love. <laughs> it's like cabin crew. <laughs> Chicken or beef? I can sort that for you, my love. Now, you might need to reload the waters a few times for this next one, All just right. to warn you now. So, I'm trying to hold it. Yeah, reload. It's gardener's question time mm. on BBC Radio 4. Water, please. Now, you're about to hear from gardening expert, Bunny. I'm not sure Bunny's mum would be happy with her sharing this story on national radio. Uh, but what are the signs that you've got the box tree caterpillar and what can you do to combat it, Bunny? Well, my mum got it last year and she has a box nursery. So for her, she was really worried. And she looked at her box and there was sort of... It was starting to look a bit off-colour, should we say, slightly wilty. So they examined it and they saw these tiny little caterpillars quite early on because they get to four centimetres long and they look a bit like a cabbage white butterfly. But she sprayed it with an insecticide and that cured it. And I think this massive um, interest in it is because people are worried. (laughs) (laughs) Now, Bunny there was talking about an an invasive caterpillar capable of reducing garden hedges to bare skeletons. Wow. Her mum had it. Tim sent me that one. (coughs) (laughs) Thanks, Tim. Cheers, Tim. (laughs) Bottoms up, Tim. Next clip on Inu and Bingo and more water, please. I'm very wet. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Sticking with Radio 4. <laughs> Get your waters, come on. Listener Diane is really struggling here to understand some of the benefits of travelling to Vietnam. Now we're going to go to Diane, who's in Swindon. Diane. Oh, Vietnam is uh, the destination in, in mind. Um, Dong, D-O-N-G. <laughs> that, um, the- <laughs> it's just the name of a currency in Vietnam. <laughs> Let's see if we can get through this, please. Yeah, okay. Come on, I'm going to play it to you again. Let's right. see if we can get through this, come on. Oh, wow, that suit is white, Chris. It's very wet. Here we go. Now we're going to go to Diane, who's in Swindon. Diane. Oh, Vietnam is uh, the destination in, in mind. Um, Dong, D-O-N-G, that's um, the currency. It's largely in paper money. And I'm understanding that um, it takes a sort of fist full of dongs, just a, a small amount of um, daily um, food, etc. Diane, I can confirm that Diane is right. <laughs> <laughs> More water's been delivered. Yeah, that's nice. Dong. D-O-N-G. Thanks for pointing that out. Who's spelling it out, Diane? 
<laughs> and I'm understanding that um, it takes a sort of fist full of dongs. I think I'm sure I've shot I've seen that film. Water, please. <laughs> fist full of dongs. More water. Oh, it's been reloaded. Cheers, mate. Oh. Okay, here we go, lads. I know it's wet, but keep going. We're going over to The Only Way is Essex, and Bobby on the show is on a date. I don't think this is an ideal question to ask out loud on a first date. Do I put four fingers in or two? Bobby, of course, was in a pottery class. Do I put four fingers in or two? <laughs> Alan and Murphy Tidville spotted that. Alan. Thanks, Alan. OK, another clip. <laughs> Greg, now it's possibly your favourite ever clip. Mm. We're going over to the National Lottery, in it to win it. <laughs> He can't even talk about it without you two losing it. Sorry. It's my um it's my Achilles heel. This it one. is really. I've got wet legs. <laughs> no, that's the problem with a short suit, isn't it? Mm. Okay. The National Lottery is in it to win it. Halfway through the question round. I worry that host Dale Winton completely forgets that he's on live television. So I'm going to go with head. You're fairly convinced the answer is head. Yes. Shall I accept head? <laughs> Every single time he loves it. <laughs> Shall I accept head? <laughs> That's the best ever. And finally, one more, lads. Come on, oh, make it a good one. We're going over to The Taste on Channel 4. Water, please. Mm. You've really got to admire Nigella Lawson's honesty as a judge. We have to decide on three. Yes, I know. Yes. Three worst. It makes me very nervous. I had two people um, in the bottom last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Honest, though. We have to decide on three. Yes, I know. Yes. Three worst. It makes me very nervous. I had two people um, in the bottom last week. That is Greg James, Innuendo Bingo, day four of the return of the game, and that was absolutely fantastic, as I expected it to be.